into this worship time together. We pray that our worship will be acceptable to you. Father, we're thankful for our college group that was successful in returning home. We're thankful for the spiritual growth that they, that they went through this weekend. We pray that you'll be with us and help us to always do what's right in your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll go ahead and apologize in advance tonight for more of the same this morning. My voice uh, played out on me some this morning. Got out and mowed grass, leaves and stuff yesterday, I think, all that. Dust and stuff got in my sinuses and voice is still a little scratchy tonight. So I've got me a water bottle with me tonight and I apologize if I have to take a sip of it. We'll start the service tonight with O Spread the Tidings Round, number 632. Uh, Greg is speaking tonight on his visit to Thailand and the, the mission work there. So I tried to center some songs tonight around the idea of taking the word uh, of the Lord and spreading it to those, not just in other countries, but around us here at home also. <clears throat> oh, spread the tidings round. Next song will be Seeking the Lost, number 624.
Let us pray. Our most gracious Father who art in heaven, so thankful, Father, for this day, for this time that we can come back and study thy word. So thankful, Father, that we can just assemble together and sing praises to thee, Father. And we just pray that our worship tonight will be pleasing in thy sight, Father. So thankful for all the missionary efforts, Father, from this congregation and for all those we just pray, Father, that you continue to bless them. So thankful for their courage, Father, to go up on foreign soil and tell the world about your son. Father, be with us through the rest of this lesson. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This time we'll sing, Have You Seen Jesus, My Lord? Ask if you're capable to please stand. <clears throat>
Tonight's scripture is coming from Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight and, and the encouragement you've given me concerning this presentation. Many of you I gave those words of encouragement this morning. I know that several of you have been after me for quite some time. Greg, when are we going to hear about your trip? Greg, when are we going to hear about your trip? Well, tonight's the night. As usual, I've got way too much to say and not enough time to say it, so we're going to move rather rapidly through several, uh, several pictures. But I first want to begin by saying thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, be gone from Boonville for a little while, uh, allowing me to take uh, Sarah with me and us be able to go on this trip together as father and daughter. Appreciate the elders giving me this opportunity and letting me do that, as well as I want to thank uh, so many of you who helped us out uh, financially. I uh, won't go a lot into the detail about the maps. You can look up a, a map if you'd like to, but uh, that gives you kind of a a broad view of where Thailand is and what surrounds it and the, uh, the nations around it. Here's a little bit uh, closer up view of that and what is immediately on the, uh, the edge. We're there in Bangkok. You see there close uh, down toward the water. Uh, that is where we spent uh, the majority of our time and there's a little different, um, different, little different rendering of that. Uh, let me tell you that uh, the population of Thailand is about 66 million folks. There are over 14 million, between 14 and 15 million folks that live in Bangkok or in the surrounding metropolitan area. Uh, there are folks everywhere. Uh, smartphones are prevalent. Uh, some have said perhaps even more so than the U.S., if you can believe that. Uh, I will say this. As much as I've seen folks in the U.S. like to take pictures, the Thai people like to take more. Now, they don't take as many selfies as Americans do, but they do take uh, a lot of pictures. Anyway, the, the folks are friendly, um, open-minded, uh, willing to listen, uh, that sort of thing. Let me, I want to kind of begin, this is maybe a little bit unusual, but I kind of want to begin by answering some of your questions uh, about some of the things that, that happen and so on. This is, this is when we're starting. This was 2 o'clock uh, on a, uh, a Friday morning. Uh, let me go ahead and brag on Sarah right here. Uh, prior to us leaving, she took about seven or eight, nine weeks test there in one day to be able to go. And so I didn't sleep that night. She didn't sleep much. We were tired, but we were excited and ready to go. Kevin Brumley came over and drove us to Huntsville, and we were ready to go. Got her a, a window seat so that uh, she could see uh, what was going on. And, of course, we, we left there while it was still dark. What we didn't realize is that we weren't going to see darkness again for several, several, several hours. So I don't know if the window seat was such a good idea or not. But anyway, I got her going uh, so she could see some of the things that were going on. Uh, this is the airport, of course, catching up with things, making sure everybody knows uh, what's what and, and so on. Uh, this is the Tokyo airport. Uh, this is after driving to Huntsville, flying from Huntsville to Houston, staying in Houston for a little while, and then being on a plane for 14 and a half hours and landing in Tokyo. And let's just say it caught up with Sarah. Uh, we had a layover there. We had planned on kind of looking around and doing some things, but this is what she did. And the only reason I'm not doing it too is because both of us couldn't do it at the same time. Uh, she got a little sick going over, but she was a trooper. She hung in there and really kept on going and uh, didn't, didn't complain. Uh, just it was unusual. It was the first time she'd ever flown, and she got broken in really quickly. But uh, we found a place there kind of away from everyone else that we could kind of uh, rest in that. So that, that's going on. Uh, much bigger smiles. This is in Bangkok, and uh, those of you that traveled, you know why she's smiling so much, right? Every luggage piece is there. Uh, that, was, that was an exciting time to, to realize that we'd gone all those miles and our luggage still be there. This is a group of folks that, that met us uh, there at the airport. Now understand we got in about a little after 11 o'clock 11 o'clock Bangkok time. And all of these folks were there to greet us and to meet us and to welcome us to the country, and we were thankful for that. They presented us with little bracelets, I guess is the best way to say. These are made out of um, uh, flowers, 
and uh, they were gorgeous, they were pretty, but they insisted on us having them, and uh, we were glad to accept the gift. Now, a lot of you ask about the food. Uh, I guess I've got to ask more about food. I don't know why y'all think I like to eat so much, but I've got to ask more about food than anything else. Uh, Sarah enjoyed the different water bottles, and, and of course that is one of the things that you get very familiar with there is, is drinking the water. But uh, the, the food was fine. This is uh, Sunday after, uh, after worship service. They have a very nice mall there, uh, Seacon Square, close by, that has American-type food is the best way to say it. And uh, after being gone a couple of days and having breakfast at the hotel and not eating a whole lot, Sarah was glad to get these hamburgers and fries. Now, they're not... The picture does them a little injustice. They're not that big. Those are... Those are small burgers, and she didn't eat all of them, but uh, she was excited to get some different kind of food rather than airline food and some other things in her, in her body at this time. But this is at a, a nice restaurant. You ask about the food, really in Thailand, if you're willing to pay for it, you, you can do what you want to. They have some very nice restaurants that have more Western type food, and of course you can, you can go to the, the Thai restaurants and things like that as well. It, it's really, uh, the thing that amazed me with, with Thailand is in, or at least Bangkok, is in the, even just a small area of the city in which we were, you see everything from fancy, fancy, fancy to, to dirt poor, and it's, it's all right there together. But, but here's some of the, the deals with the food. Now, uh, this was a little uh, Thai place that we went after church that night. Uh, the couple there uh, is Subin and Kim Panboon. That is the preacher and his wife there uh, bes besides Sarah. And then the other two white folks there are Perry Brethert and his wife, Tricia Brethert. Perry is one of the elders over at Salem. And uh, they went over just a few days before we did. They were already there when we got there. And this is a place that they uh, frequent after church on Sunday night. And if I'm being honest, this was probably the worst that I had. Uh, I didn't order very well. I got talked into ordering something that I shouldn't have ordered. And let's just say I went away hungry and went home and, and, and got some snacks. But uh, uh, very, very good, um, very good experience. This are, these are some things from our hotel. Um, as most of you know, in a lot of countries like this, for breakfast you have things like rice and, and noodles and vegetables and hot food and things that we think about eating for supper, they eat for breakfast. And so here are some of the things uh, that were there. We stayed at a, at a hotel that was that was pretty nice and part of that was you had a breakfast every morning and so these were the things in, in the breakfast this was one of the favorite those are jams and jellies there with uh, some bread and there's a little bitty toaster oven to the right of that that you could uh, toast some uh, toast toast some bread they also had some little it's almost like donut holes that that Sarah grew very fond of and uh, you could kind of put those in that toaster oven and and it kind of it'd roll it around. It's one of those that's got a track. It'd roll it around and spit it out. Well, the last day we were there, Sarah was looking forward to having that one more time. Well, there was a big group came in, and apparently they didn't quite understand how everything worked. And when that little belt spit Sarah's things out, the lady grabbed them and took them to her table and ate them. So missed out on that. But anyway, uh, di different things like that. Uh, those are, I think, cucumbers and tomatoes. Uh, all kinds of fruit, wonderful fruit, fresh fruit, love the fruit. Uh, people say, can I survive in Thailand? If, if you love fresh fruit, you can survive in Thailand, that and rice. If you can do rice and fruit, you're good. Uh, all kinds of, of good, good things there, very, very tasty. Uh, as you can see there, I think that's my plate on the left. I've got some rice, and I don't, I'm not sure what's on top of it. I, I couldn't tell what it was. If it looked pretty good, I tried it. Um, and it was good, but usually fruit and something like that was what we had for, uh, for our breakfast. Uh, this was one of my favorite meals. This was actually at the, uh, um, the crocodile farm. It was just kind of a little, little restaurant there. It's chicken and rice, and the, the uh, things you see on top are red and very, very, very hot. Uh, I found out why you don't put many of them on there. Uh, this was one of my favorite dishes. Uh, we went there, and I said, what do you order? Well... You can, you can order crocodile, you can order various things, but probably the safest is to do the chicken and rice. I'm like, I can do the chicken and rice. I enjoyed it very much. By this time, Sarah had kind of gotten a little bit scared of what she was going to eat, what she was not going to eat, but we found her french fries. Uh, Sarah discovered that you can live on french fries if you go to Thailand. Uh, that is something that, that, is, that is doable, and, and she just about did. Uh, 
KFC, I'll just put that on there to, to remind you. I've told some of you the story. Sometimes people say that, you know, when you, you go to these different places and they've got these, these restaurants around, uh, KFC and McDonald's and that sort of thing, that they're all the same. That's not true. Uh, Thai people define spicy different than we define spicy. We ordered some fried chicken and, and the lady said, do you want it crispy or regular or spicy? Well, I, my go-to answer is I want it spicy. And she said, well, it's going to be a few minutes. Um, we'll bring it to you when it's done. I said, okay, that's good. I get fresh, spicy chicken. Well, they gave me some chicken, and, and of course, the, the communication is very difficult, trying to communicate by pointing at stuff and, and, and all of that. Um, I get, she, I'm waiting, and she says, no, you can go ahead and sit down. So I think, well, okay, maybe I've got what I ordered. I'm not really sure what I ordered, but, but I've got it, and I go sit down. Well, I eat it. Well, it's, it's pretty hot. And uh, I think, okay, well, eventually they bring some more. And I asked Perry and Tricia and, and uh, Sarah, I said, I don't, I, I don't know if this, either this isn't spicy or my taste buds are burnt so bad I can't taste what it is. But uh, I learned then that the ingredients they use for spicy chicken and KFC in Thailand do not exist in America, I can promise you. Uh, it's just not there. But anyway, uh, McDonald's, I, I meant to start with this. When you go to Thailand, one of the things that you'll hear all the time is Sawadikop. That is just a greeting. Uh, Sawadikop with the P on the end for men and just K-A for the women. It's actually got an R in there, but it doesn't get pronounced very much. And, and this here. And it was amazing because anytime you would greet someone, that's what they would do. And I loved it being in the, in the church service because when someone would walk in maybe a little late, even though they couldn't get up and say something to them, they would turn to them and do this. And so we stopped by McDonald's one time on the way back and we found out that Ronald McDonald knew the, the greeting for Thailand as well. The menus aren't the same because when you go to a McDonald's in Bangkok, you can get, you guessed it, chicken and rice. Uh, you can get a burger, you can get fries, you can get other things, but you can also order chicken and rice. Uh, McDonald's, do, they do the fried chicken, uh, much similar to KFC. Uh, not just the tenders and nuggets and things like that, but fried chicken. And you'll notice well also that they have real plates and real silverware that they serve their food on. There are several uh, vending type uh, things like this throughout the streets of Thailand, uh, selling different things uh, all along. This particular picture here, I'm switching gears now, is uh, taken at, in the world's largest building, building in Thailand, and there's a restaurant up there. And that restaurant is a buffet as big as anything I've ever seen. It's like taking a Chinese restaurant and Ryan's and Golden Corral and about, every, about 10 biggest buffets you can think of and putting it all in one place. And so they've got food all around it and it's all kinds of food, this and that and other. But you know what they had? They had French fries. Sarah went all the way around looking, all the way back around and came back and found French fries and chicken nuggets. So they know what uh, the, we Americans want to eat. This is at the, the church building. This is some of the meals that we had there at the church building. This is in the, the bottom part of the church building. Uh, very good food there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That white on the plate is some kind of noodle. It's a Thai noodle. They really couldn't even tell me exactly what it was. It's a type of Thai noodle. Very good. Um, you see the fruit there to the top of it. Uh, I enjoyed that very much. They had some kind of Topping, soup, something, again, I don't really know what it was. It was very good, but that's what you put on top of it. That was the way you ate it, is you, you had these noodles, and, and they had this made, and you put it on it, and you ate it that way. And so I enjoyed that very much, and you know what Sarah had, right? French fries. Uh, some other things, some of the chicken and, and rice that we had, uh, and there's Sarah's French fries, uh, cucumbers, uh, but the desserts in Thailand are wonderful. Uh, I had been doing well before I went to Thailand, had stayed off the sugar and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't do well there. Ate all kind of sugar and ice cream and all sorts of things. And then for you chocolate lovers, there's all kind of Kit Kats. And if you're really a chocolate lover, you need to try this one. It's called Green Tea Kit Kat. Um, I'll just, you can just make up your own mind about that. I'll just leave that as it is. All right, uh, we got to see some of the city, some of the culture around. The first couple of days, because our meeting was going to start at the beginning, 
And they, they, they're very proud of their country, so they wanted to take us around and show us different things. And, and that for us, or for me, was a learning experience because as we were driving by, we were asking questions. Uh, as we were experiencing this, we were asking questions. Of course, we were also having fun. This is, <coughs> this is us at a, a crocodile farm. It's basically a, a mini, I guess, a mini kind of amusement type park where you can see a lot of different things. But here we are getting ready for show, and, and here are some of the things that they do in the show, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to, to see this. Uh, nothing was in English, of course, so we... I uh, don't think they made any jokes at our expense, but uh, they, uh, he would say some certain things and everybody would start laughing and we kind of laughed too because we thought he must have said something funny. Uh, but uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun uh, to see that. And then they had an elephant show. Of course, we went to the elephant show. Uh, elephants in Thailand are a big deal for a lot of reasons, not just because of like uh, this type of show elephants, but elephants in Thailand is, is, it, is similar to the bald eagle for America. It's kind of a symbol. It's kind of a, um, well, it's just there. You get things with Thailand, you can find, find elephants on it. Uh, the difference is they make use of their elephants more. In other words, when they have some kind of big government deal or whatever, there will actually be elephants marching in the parade and doing some of those types of things. But this is just a show elephants for fun. I don't know if you can see that or not. That one's actually bowling. Uh, I didn't get the picture when he had all the pins standing up, but he actually did a pretty good job of, of bowling there and then walking on these uh, ropes across. It's, I got him in the middle where he's almost down on the, the bottom, but he, he actually did walk across those two ropes through there. And that, was there, that one there is painting a flower, uh, believe it or not. Uh, it looked pretty good. Saw some of those up close in one of the shops, but, but uh, that, was, that was fun to do that. And then they said, do you want to ride an elephant? Well, yeah. You know, how, long, how many times are you going to be in Thailand and be asked if you want to ride an elephant? So, so Sarah and I got on the elephant, and you can't see real well. We're, we're hanging on pretty tight. That's, that's, that's a long way up there. We had to climb a lot of steps to get up there. But uh, we enjoyed a pretty good uh, ride through the, uh, through the deal. As you go through the, the little park there, there's all kind of, of uh, crocodiles everywhere. They breed them there. They raise them there. And so uh, we saw all of those that we wanted to see and then some. And there's Sarah and Tricia having a little fun. This is uh, Subin Panboon, the preacher. This is a rest. This is my first introduction to Thai ice cream. It's why we've stopped here to rest. And the guy on the left there is a fellow named uh, Surya. And uh, he uh, drove us around a lot, helps a lot with the literature program and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. Let me think about these lights. Um, I found this interesting. Um, in, in one of the places we were looking at, at kind of the old city, uh, it, it's, it's, it's to take you back the way Thailand, Thailand used to be. It, we, they call it the ancient city, and it's one of these things that you go and basically you see Thailand the way it used to be. If you can tell that, those are uh, stone shingles. That's what that is. That, that's a roof made out of stone shingles, and they're, they're laid there on top of each other, and they hook on wooden pieces back behind is the way they stand up. And I just... I found that interesting that it was created that way. Uh, there's uh, some of the, the places around that it was called the Floating City, and I had to have coconut while I was there. Uh, it was okay, nothing, nothing special. Uh, one of the boats, there were several boats there. They actually still use these boats in some of the ceremonies. Of course, they used to be used a lot more um, a long time ago, but they still use those some now in the ceremony. And then here are just some of the pictures from um, this, this ancient city and some of the things that we saw. That's the old Thailand flag uh, that had an elephant on it. Uh, where we're standing now is at the top of a man-made mountain with a very old, old ancient temple on top of it. Uh, a lot of history there. Of course, it's, it's fallen down. It's in decay and ruin now, but it's several hundred years old. And so we're at the top of this. And so some of these pictures here are kind of looking back down at this old temple from, from several years ago. Um, this is one, we kept taking pictures, and I said, Sarah, none of us are getting in the, in the picture together. And I started trying to figure out how to take a selfie of us, and finally my daughter took my phone away from me and said, here, Dave, let me do it. And so that's the only selfie we got because I couldn't figure out how to do it. But anyway, uh, that's, that's on this mountain. Here's at the bottom there uh, some of the neat things. Uh, the transportation, you, you see a lot of people riding in this. This is, uh, seemed to be the most common form. Uh, 
you have taxis. I'll show you. There's some taxis later. But a lot of folks, this is kind of an open-air bus that we would saw people catch and get on uh, and, and ride around. Uh, motorcycles were, were prevalent. Uh, they, were, they were ridden by people who owned them individually, and then, of course, they were for hire. Uh, you could hire a taxi or you could hire a, a motorcycle taxi and go different places. Um, there they are at, at, the, uh, at an intersection, and the reason is uh, because they go in between all the cars. There's not many uh, stoplights there. Well, there are on the main roads, but they all wind up at the front, and so when the light turns green, they're all in the front there and, and, and take off. Uh, motorcycles everywhere. I think that one there's got got three on it. We saw one about that size with five people on it. Um, they carry six-month-old little children on it. Don't miss a beat. You know, it, it's not a big deal. They're just used to that. And then, of course, you can always get in the back of a pickup truck and ride around. Uh, this is the SkyTrain station, and it's going on the SkyTrain. This is when we were on the way to that tallest building, which was in a different part in the city. They are in the process of of developing this sky train to go further throughout the city. It, it's there now, but it's limited. It's a very uh, quick way to get around the city, basically like a subway except it's above ground and uh, sometimes a whole lot cheaper and a whole lot easier to get around on it. And of course, you got uh, the taxis. Some of them are metered. Uh, if you get one with the meter, you just pay the meter. If not, then you haggle for the price, uh, deciding what you're going to pay and, and hope that it all works out. That behind is what's called Secon Square, a very nice, elaborate mall that I was telling you about earlier. What you see there on the, on the picture there is the king of Thailand that died about a year ago. While we were there, they were preparing for the one-year anniversary of his death, and it's at the one-year anniversary of the death that the morning ends, and they have the, the cremation and the service and all of that. And so uh, as we were there, we saw more and more about him and about his life. There's the inside of the mall I was telling you about, just a gorgeous place. Um, a lot of retail places, but then parts of the mall are kind of what we would call a flea market as well. But as I said, you have the very high end of Bangkok, and then you also have the very low end. Uh, there's some folks with some produce in the back. And then uh, these are some pictures from our, our hotel, kind of the part of the city in which we were in. As you look around, uh, showing these just to say that there's, there's buildings, that was across the street from our hotel, buildings and apartment buildings for as far as you can see. Uh, just, just everywhere, uh, more and more uh, building. This was right across the street, right from our window, a uh, soccer field, and they played soccer there till uh, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning every night. Uh, this particular night, you can't tell it as well, but it's pouring down rain. Rain is standing on the field, and they're still playing uh, something they enjoy. And then there's just some other, uh, other pictures. That's on ground level. Those are apartment buildings across from our hotel. Again, our hotel was, was pretty nice, but you go a couple of blocks over, and things are not uh, nice, nice at all. Just some other pictures from the city that show the, um, um, show the, the buildings, these huge apartment buildings that they had, wall-to-wall uh, -wall people. I think I probably took that because I kept being amazed at all the wires that were there. The wires there, the electrical wires are very low, and there's a whole bunch of them. They're always wadded up, and then you go by and see things like this all the time. Uh, people out selling things, food or trinkets or whatever the case may be, uh, clothing. And again, that's, these are all you know within distance of that fancy mall, so it's just a little bit of everything. I was told here, this truck here loaded down with produce and, and vegetables, things of that nature, that that's a service that people have begun, uh, or a, a business that they do, they take that to the people that can't get out to get to the market. And so they, it's kind of peddling, what we used to call peddling, getting out and, and selling the produce around Bangkok. A lot of canals, uh, water kind of flowing through the city. Um, I'm not sure what that's being grown there on that wall, but the reason I took that picture is, is uh, when you're, you live in a city that's full of concrete, you do what you can to grow things, and so they've, they've made a contraption there and they're growing things uh, along that wall. That was probably because of the wires again. Some of the apartment buildings uh, that you see. Uh, here was uh, going across one of the major roads, and uh, you can see that the traffic, at least on the other side, is getting pretty heavy. Um, you see those white lines in the road, right? You know what those mean? 
Absolutely nothing. Actually, they're, they're motorcycle lanes. Uh, no, and honestly, they, they are similar to what they mean here, but they're not observed as much. And over there, uh, when you're driving a car, it is your responsibility to stay far enough on each side to allow a motorcycle to come down both sides. So as if you've got four lanes of traffic going, you've got five lanes of motorcycles. And they just, they weave in and out and, and all around and all that. There's no, there's no getting behind and waiting for someone else to go. They, if they can get through the spot, they're going to go. And, and that's one of the reasons they... Um, make it places so quickly. This was a night market that we went to uh, one night after services. It really didn't get going until 10 o'clock. That's something we found out about Bangkok is it is a country that mostly comes alive at night. Your restaurants there, especially those on the street, will stay open all night and there'll be people eating there all night. Uh, they, the, it's because of the heat there and some of that, uh, they, don't, they don't get going a lot during the middle of the day, but at night they come out and this was a night market that we went to uh, trying to find some things. This is where we went up to that building, uh, the tallest building in Thailand. Uh, this, will, uh, this will catch your breath a little bit when you think about, as we did, as we looked. Mile, it wasn't very clear that day, but miles in every direction. And just the realization, I think, that comes to mind that there's so many people out there and that there's so many people out there that don't know the Lord. Uh, you just look and you, you see all these people and all these buildings and all of this for miles and miles and miles and you think there's, there's all of these folks that don't know about God. There's all these folks that don't know about Jesus and his, his sacrifice on the cross and, and that sort of thing. So uh, very, um, very humbling experience to, to see some of this and think about it in that way. I put this in there. Uh, some of you will find this interesting. You can see where those cars are blocked in, right? Folks in Thailand do not think a thing in the world about blocking you in. Uh, you can see those parked and those in front have blocked them in. Well, the reason that's not a problem is because in Thailand, you leave your car unlocked and your vehicle in neutral. And if someone needs to roll your car out of the way so that they can get out, they do that. And then they roll it back in. And so you have here this very thing happening. This guy needed out, and so they, they pushed one car back and one car forward and got that one out, and then they pushed them back. And so... Uh, so when you get into a, a parking deck or even on the street, it was the same thing. You'd see all these people boxed in, and that was because they would move the cars to get out. We ventured out in a taxi one day to go to a market and, and do, actually we did some exploring on our own. We didn't have any Thai people with us. We just, uh, it was just the four of us, and we wanted to see uh, what we could do without getting in trouble and do some shopping. So we did that, and we found out as we were going through that they'd had some severe flooding. Uh, considered the, the worst flooding in Bangkok in over 50 years, and so uh, there were some pictures of that. Of course, it didn't slow the motorcycles down much. Uh, uh, there is at the market, uh, Tricia and Sarah, with a picture. This is uh, outside our hotel, um, the columns there, and of course the elephant. As I said, there are elephants everywhere. Uh, I thought it fitting that uh, while it was Sunday morning uh, over in Bangkok, it was Saturday night in Mississippi, and Alabama was playing football. So I put my Alabama shirt on and got a picture taken with an elephant. Uh, but that, that's outside our hotel there. You ask about the weather, it was hot. I don't know what else to say. Uh, think about uh, uh, Mississippi in uh, June and July, just hot and humid. But you get used to it. Uh, it's one of those things you get used to. Uh, um, Thailand is primarily uh, Buddhist, and so you see these temples throughout. Um, this was down, I think... This was one of the places where we were traveling, and, and you see this. This one is right down, was right down the road from our hotel, uh, kind of a little shrine there. Uh, this was our taxi driver uh, one day on the way back. He, he had that in his car. Uh, Buddhism is very prevalent. Um, it, it, it's, it's everywhere. Now, these next several pictures are at that ancient city that I talked about, and so they're actually replicas of the real thing. In other words, they're more for show and tell uh, they're they're more for th this is what it's like although we did see some people in there worshiping uh, these different things um, a lot of a lot of fancy things uh, very ornate it, it, it's it's beautiful but it's just uh, false motives and, and obviously a false god but but here are some of the the pictures from that a lot of gold 
uh, like I said, it, it's beautiful architecture. It's beautiful to look at, but but that is about the uh, the Buddhist religion. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that, how tall. Well, yeah, you see the man here in the forefront to let you know how big that that statue there is. It, it was it was huge. Okay. Um, the sign there at the bottom of the blue sign is the one that says Church of Christ. I was impressed with the fact that um, they, they had several signs throughout the city that talked about the Church of Christ. Uh, this is the one uh, on the road that you turn to go to the church building. And then this sign here is, is actually at the church. You turn right behind that sign, and uh, that's where the church building is. Um, what you're looking at now is the, what we would call the auditorium is up there on the top. It had air conditioners. It was air conditioned. It was nice. On the bottom is where they have some of their Bible classes, where they have, uh, where they eat, where the kitchen is, and some of those things. And of course, it's not air conditioned. It's open air. Uh, Sarah and Tricia and others helped with the kids down there. Uh, it was interesting. The, the bulk of us were up there in the auditorium where it was air conditioned, but the women and children were down below where it wasn't. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the, the deal you're looking at there. This is a gym that they have. They utilize a lot, especially on Sunday afternoons because they don't go home. And so they hang around there and they, volleyball is one of their favorite. They've also got some soccer goals there and they play basketball and things of that nature. Uh, these are what they call dormitories. Basically, they're, they're big rooms with some mats in them. But when they have this meeting like we did where these folks come in from all over town, uh, they have a place for them to stay, and they have some bathroom facilities, shower facilities, and that thing. A lot of beautiful flowers around. Uh, this is an apartment building next to the church building. It's what that is you see uh, back there, but a, a nice little uh, place there to, to sit uh, in the shade. Uh, and they hang around a lot. Uh, they're kind of like boonful folks. When the service is over, that doesn't mean you go home. It just means you go somewhere else and talk, and, and they would hang around and, and, and talk and share with one another. Uh, that's the kitchen. I, I couldn't get real close to the kitchen. Uh, they wouldn't let me. I even offered to help, and they wouldn't let me do that either. Uh, but you see that stack of plates there. When they provide food for all these folks, they use real plates. Uh, uh, they, and then they wash them all, and I'll we'll show you some of that later. There's, that's behind the kitchen there, them cleaning some things and doing some things behind, behind the kitchen. That's the tree of some of their young, young folks. Uh, church is going well there. They have uh, the preacher there, Subin Panboon. They have three elders. They have three deacons. And uh, things seem to be uh, progressing well. We went over there for a gospel meeting, uh, kind of like a lectureship. Uh, we had folks come from, I think, seven or eight different congregations came to this deal. It, it lasted from Wednesday night to Sunday night. And usually what happened is is some of the folks came in on Wednesday night. Almost everybody was there on Thursday and Friday because on Thursday and Friday you also had classes during the day. Some of the folks that lived a ways off had to leave on Saturday and were not there, but then many more were still there Saturday night and Sunday night. For instance, the first Sunday we were there we had 55. The second Sunday we were there we had 110. Uh, some of those were visitors and some of those were uh, people from the correspondence course and, and, and that sort of thing. But they had a big, big banner there. This is the entrance into the gym, uh, advertising, uh, all types of things. They had it completely laid out, who was going to be speaking about what, and so on. Uh, this is inside uh, the church building there. Uh, you go up the stairs, as I said, to the auditorium, and here is where they meet, a very, very nice, uh, nice place to, to meet and to fellowship. Uh, a lot of things uh, uh, worship there. Um, this is Perry Bretherick. Uh, again, he's one of the elders at Salem, and he taught some of the classes during the day and, and introduced me at some point and, and some of that. And, of course, there beside him is Subin Panboon translating. Uh, here's some of the folks that are there. You can see the curtains in the back. Basically, they fill up the front, and then they can uh, open that up in the back to allow more people to go in. Uh, this is uh, downstairs where... Uh, they're working with some of the little kids. They're kind of doing a type of VBS uh, thing. They have a lesson, and then they make some take-home things to kind of supplement the lesson, and that's what the kids are doing here. Uh, working, uh, Sarah and Tricia and different ones working with them there. Uh, one, of the young me one of the men that had come to, uh, to visit, and there is uh, Sarah and Tricia. 
and this is one of the Thai women. She actually is one of the ones that is a little more versed in English. Uh, she actually uh, can speak English very well and write uh, English. We're friends on Facebook now, and I can tell by some of her posts that she can uh, converse very well in, in English. There's a picture of the, the congregation there as we're getting ready for service. Uh, that's a Thai Bible. I took a picture of that because, number one, I noticed how worn it was and how marked up it was and how someone had obviously spent a lot of time with it. Also, you'll notice how thick it is. Uh, the Thai language is very different. It has, I think it has 20-something vowels and 40-something consonants. But in addition to that, it has a lot of over and below letters. And so you can't put as much text on one page. And so their Bibles, if you have the Old and the New Testament, are very thick. Uh, this, this man here came up. He spoke very good English, uh, fairly good English. He was talking to me. was very encouraging. He was a very, very good encourager while we were there. And uh, he said, I taught myself. I asked about his English. I said, you speak English fairly well. How did you learn? He said, I taught myself English by reading the Bible. Uh, that's, that's the way that I, I learned the English words. Uh, here are some of the, uh, the, the ladies there present. They, they always wanted uh, pictures taken. Uh, this lady here uh, in, in the middle was one that gave me a, a gift when we left, a pen, and it's a tie number nine, and it was in honor of the king. He was king number nine, and she wanted me to have that before we left. Very sweet lady. This is outside after uh, services. This is uh, uh, Sarah hanging out with some of the, the youth group there. Uh, they had a, let's see, a Julianne and a Hannah and a Sarah, I think, were the, were the main ones. Uh, they had a lot of fun together. Julianne had spent some time in the States, actually was raised most in the States, so she spoke English, so she was the go-between. Uh, she and Sarah enjoyed talking to one another in, in, in English, and uh, Sarah and the other two girls couldn't communicate at all. That, that just it didn't happen. But, but this, is, this is them out there uh, talking and, and having some fun and doing some different things, uh, some, of the, some of the group there. This little baby there is named, they called her Lila or Layla, something like that. And Sarah's the only white person she'd let hold her. Uh, every time I'd even get close to her, she'd make a face like she was about to do something. And, and uh, Perry couldn't do it and Trisha couldn't do it, but she'd let Sarah hold her. Uh, she must have had to touch. Here is, is Sarah and, 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 and Julianne. They spend a lot of time together doing different things. Here's some more of the VBS stuff. and The day that they made a uh, mask. Uh, they put their mask on, get their picture taken, and, and here's some of the crafts and different things that they were making. The kids are absolutely adorable, uh, very, uh, very wonderful there. Uh, here are pictures of me speaking. They're, they're all the same. I've just got different shirt and tie on. Um, they, the, first, the first night I spoke, uh, Subin had his stool because he was so short he couldn't see over the floors or over the, the flowers. Well, after I spoke the first night, they realized I was short too, so they got me a stool the second night, and, and uh, we're both standing on, I, I almost fell off once, but other than that, uh, standing on the stool. Uh, using an interpreter or translator uh, was a learning curve. It's very difficult because you basically can only go one sentence at a time, and it's kind of hard to, to get a thought going. Uh, I, I like to feel like I improved as I went along, uh, but, but anyway, uh, that was an experience. This is a, a group picture after the Friday, uh, Friday night services, maybe it was, or Friday, maybe cl after classes on Friday morning. Some of them are going to be having to leave. Maybe that's what it was. Anyway, uh, this is a group uh, that came from, from all different places. Like I said, seven or eight different churches represented there. Uh, here's a young lady uh, that was baptized. She had finished the correspondence course, and uh, we were glad to be able to be there to witness her baptism uh, into Christ. And... Uh, if I can get past that, I think that was actually a video. If I can, well, that may be stuck. Okay. Um, what was what was interesting about that, and this is this is them um, greeting her after that. But after the baptism, you know what song they sung, right? In Thai, Oh Happy Day. I just, I just thought that was, that was neat. Okay, quickly about the, the literature program. These are all the different lessons that they have put out, that they have translated into Thai. 
Uh, the literature program has been going for a long time, began in 1971, uh, total enrollment over 1.2 million, an average of 75 new enrollments each day for 45 years. Now that has slowed down recently. Uh, 3,954 uh, 3, known baptisms as a result of this program, uh, and, and it, it's a very good program. Uh, this is the, the ad they put in the paper, cost about $200 a month to put this small ad in the paper where folks sign up for that. And this is the literature building. On the second floor there is where the preacher and his wife now live. They gave up their house and actually moved on to church property and have a very small apartment there. But this is inside the literature program. Uh, this is that big machine they don't use anymore. They found that, that now it's, it's easier to uh, just have other folks do it. Those are some copies of the first lessons. Uh, of course, I was telling uh, Marilyn, when they order first lessons, they order 10,000 at a time. That's, that's the, the, the volume that they do. And these pictures are just some of the, the lessons laying around, some of the things inside the literature program, the building there, and some of the things that they do in grading that, uh, and so on. These are a group of folks that had completed the courses. There are seven courses, seven units, with different lessons in each unit. And if you go through the whole thing, you will have completed almost 50 lessons. And so when someone has gone through all of that and completed all 50, they've really gotten well introduced into the Lord's church and to God and all of that. And of course, it starts at the very basics with creation with God. But when they complete certain aspects of that, they invite them to service and they recognize, recognize them at church service. It's a one way to get on the church service. They recognize them there, honor them, and they receive their certificates at this time. And so this is what was going on after services one time. That's another group of them. We had two different groups come through, and what was interesting, the first group seemed to be primarily young people, and the second group seemed to be primarily older people. But these are what they're holding in their hand are those certificates for completing that. And then you've got just the people. Uh, this, this young man right here was very impressive to me. He led a lot of the singing. Uh, he paid very close attention. I noticed that uh, one night he had copied down all of my notes from the PowerPoint in English. Now, he doesn't speak English. And, but he writes English very well, and he was trying to learn. And we, we talked a little bit about some different things, and he asked me about going to school to be a preacher and things of that nature. And, and when it was all said and done, I, I left all my notes with him. I said, look, here's, here's the English copies, and you can, uh, you, you can look at these and study these. And so very, very impressed with him, uh, a great young man. This is one of the elder sons. Uh, I think he must have been the official announcement maker. He seemed to make announcements more than anybody else. Uh, Sarah and a friend went riding through at least part of Bangkok on a bicycle. Her and Julianne enjoyed that. Um, uh, you've seen Perry Brethren there and Subin Panboon. The guy in the middle in the black is a missionary. He's an American. He's up in the northern part of Thailand in Chiang Mai. Uh, he was very helpful in helping us understand more about uh, the Thai culture and their beliefs and some of that. Uh, we had several conversations with him trying to learn some things about that. And there's little Lala with her dad and Sarah and some of the girls playing a game. I'm not so sure what, but it must have been a lot of fun because they really seemed to, to enjoy that. Uh, they play London Bridge in, in Thailand. Um, this guy here, uh, his English name or what he was named, Peter, we figured out he was a, about a 15 or 16 year old young man when my, dad had, when my dad visited Thailand years and years and years ago. His name is very hard to pronounce, and so my dad named him Peter. Well, you're going to be Peter. And so when I asked him who he was, he said, Peter. And I said, no, you're, what's your name? He said, I'm Peter. And I thought, okay, you're not going to even let me try. And then he finally did tell me what his name was, and I said, yeah, you're right, you're Peter. Um, but anyway, uh, just interesting that he was a young man 35 years ago. Now he has a wife and kids, very faithful, very big part of the congregation here. Um, that was uh, another, another group picture uh, before we left with some of those that had, had gotten their certificates. Uh, this, is, this is the way they do their, um, it's not a potluck because they provide the food. They have cooks that provide the food. But after church on Sunday afternoon, they get together and they have this meal together. Uh, you can see them going down the line. If you'll notice at the top, there's two. You start with two big pots of rice. And then I don't know what, what all else was down there that you put on. But they enjoyed a great period of fellowship together. And there's 
uh, the, the kitchen. Uh, this lady here is 90 years old. Uh, she said um, she took a taxi to get there. I don't know how long she had to come. I know it had to have been expensive. Someone else was taking her home. Uh, she's, she's 90 years old, did not speak very good English, but as we were helping her get in the, the van, she said, uh, the Lord be with you till we meet again in very good English. And I thought, lady, you're 90. I don't know if we'll meet again this side of heaven, but uh, I'm looking forward to meeting her again someday. Very, very faithful lady. Uh, just some other pictures here as we were winding down our time together of the, of the different things. This is a group from another congregation. The guy sitting right next to me is a preacher at another congregation in Bangkok. He actually was a student of Subin Panboon and then um, eventually became a preacher, and that's a congregation a few miles away uh, in Bangkok. And on Sunday afternoon, uh, after the meal was over, they would go to the, the gym and play volleyball and basketball and that sort of thing. At least that's what some of them would do. And the rest of them would pull their mats out there in the floor and take a Sunday afternoon nap. So they, they do Sunday afternoon naps in Thailand as well. The kids would play and uh, do different things. Um, there we are uh, toward, at the end there uh, with Subin and Kim and with Tricia and Perry. Uh, the, this man here is another one of the elders. He wanted to get up before we left and talk about different things. And uh, then they, prevented, they presented us with some gifts. Uh, which were absolutely uh, amazing. They were very gracious. Uh, and I didn't put the picture on there of when they made me talk because I started crying like a baby. Uh, but uh, a very good um, very good day uh, coming to, a, to an end there. Uh, Ring around the roses, I think, is what was going on there. Um, I put that back in because that, the bottom of that has been completely redone in honor of the king I was talking about. We saw a lot of that when we were there. And now this is getting ready to go home. Uh, very early in the morning, they came and got us at 4. Uh, you can see our room was, was nice. Didn't have air conditioning unless you were in it. Uh, when you left the room, the air conditioner went off, so it wasn't going to be cool when you got home, but it would, it would cool off. And then this is a group that met us at 4 o'clock in the morning and took us to the airport and saw us off in that way. Uh, we thought it was interesting on the way home, we got to ride the Star Wars plane. So... Uh, Sarah wanted me to put that in there. It, it was Star Wars, and they even had some of the music and different things going on in, uh, in the flight. By that time, I was just ready to get home, and then the group picture there. I, I, I went longer than I meant to, and I apologize, but thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. Very quickly, as we close, uh, a, a few takeaways. Number one, being grateful and being thankful that we have this many Christians together at one time. There were folks there that came together for that um, that, that meeting, what we called a gospel meeting, and they came from all over Thailand, seven or eight different churches. One group traveled 14 hours to get there. And the most we had that Friday night was 135 people. And them being together, realizing how small they were was amazing. The love they had for each other, the excitement they had, and it made me realize how blessed I am to live in a country that although it's not what, everything it needs to be, but they live in a country that's 99% anti-God, period, follow Buddhism. Their children that are taught the gospel at church are pretty well forced to worship Buddha when they go to school. And so, you know, I feel very blessed to be in, in a country like this and to have to have the freedoms that we have. Um, it, it, I mentioned some of you followed it on Facebook, the difference in, in singing some of the songs. Um, you know, the, the thought that goes behind those songs, I'll never sing How Great Thou Art Again the same way after singing it there. <clears throat> but uh, amazing the love they have for God in a very difficult situation and yet they honor him and they praise him and they love him so much and then the other part is it it made me think about our own commitment and and I guess embarrassed me a little bit to think about um, the circumstances they have and their level of commitment and sometimes the circumstances we have and our lack of commitment 
Uh, and that, that just, just gave me some things to think about, and I want you to think about as well. Again, th- thank you for your, for your time tonight. I didn't know for sure how long this was going to go, and it went longer than I meant. But uh, thank you for your encouragement and your support all along the way. Uh, there's a lot more I can say if you've got questions uh, you can ask them at another time. I'll be, be glad to share with you whatever I can. But as always, we want to have a, a song of encouragement in case there's someone here tonight that has made the decision to put on the Lord in baptism or you've made the decision to recommit your life in some way. And we want to give you that opportunity at this time if you'll come as we stand and as we sing. The gentle voice of Jesus calling, Thank you for attending the evening services here at the Boomble Church of Christ. If you're visiting with us, we thank you for showing up tonight and welcome you back each and every opportunity you may have. We have just a few announcements. Please remember all those on the uh, prayer list. Uh, Remember from this morning we mentioned Chester Meeks and Michelle Hoffman, so please continue to remember them. Also, Nina Morrison is in the local hospital in room 322. The Golden Circle will have a luncheon Tuesday at 11.30 in the Annex. Also, there's an opportunity to serve, which is on the bulletin. There's a sign-up sheet in the back in the foyer if you would like to go to Winona, November the 17th, to help with the missionary project there. These are all the announcements I have. Uh, The Lord's Supper has been left prepared. If you were hindered from taking that, you may pass at this time. Ask if you will to please stand for the singing of our closing song. After this song, we'll have our closing prayer. Take the name of Jesus with you.
Heavenly Father, God, the, we're so grateful that we could come together today to, to worship you, to study your word. We're so thankful for this evening for what Greg has shared with us. We ask that you would just help us all to have, to have mission in our hearts. And also, we think about what was mentioned about our lack of commitment. We just ask that you would ask us, that you would help us to be committed, have, have the mindset to be committed to you and to your service, God, as we go our separate ways. Forgive us when we fail you. Bring us back the next point in time. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.